Gabe and Valve had had a huge impact on all of our lives. From the astounding Half-Life series to the platform that he steamed. Gabe is not just ahead of the innovation curve, Gabe is the innovation curve. Everything Gabe has touched is magical, from the way he runs the company to every product he and Valve create. Every design meeting I attend, someone always references some groundbreaking Valve title and how great it is. That's from Peter, and that's from someone who knows gaming, and that's the truth. For those of you who aren't familiar with these games, here is just a taste of Gabe and Valve's work. It's me, Gordon, Barney from Black Mesa. Please show your appreciation, and I might suggest you might want to be upstanding as we welcome to the BAFTA Fellowship the one and only Gabe Newell. Slower than valve time is award show time, so I'll try to be uh, concise. It's fairly intimidating as a Yank coming over here to accept an award, given whenever I've watched uh, the Academy Awards and the British have come over to accept them, how well-spoken and charming they are. So I made the mistake of going online and, and looking at what previous award winners had said. Uh, and they were all wearing tuxedos, and I was like, oh my god, they expect me to be dapper and eloquent. <laughs> this is going to go very poorly. Now, everything that we do at Valve is really a collaboration. I tend to show up at award shows, but everything we've done, our games and Steam, is the result of a collaboration among all of us. Uh, so I decided to ask some of my colleagues what it is that I should say in this speech. So I asked Eric Wolp, Wolp who's the writer on Portal 2, and he said I should read from the love song of of J. Alfred Prufrock, you know, the whole ragged claws scuttling and midlife comb overs. And I said, well, it's, you know, it's a great poem, but what, what does it have to do with games or gaming? And he said, well, abs absolutely nothing. <laughs> and uh, so I asked Eric Johnson what I should do, and he said I should just come up on stage, say, go Hawks, knock the mic stand over, and walk off. <laughs> and an American football club is about the only thing that has less to do with gaming than E.E. E. Cummings. So I realized that, that even though everything that we've done to deserve this award has been the result of our collective efforts, that they were pretty much leaving me on my own to actually accept this award. So on behalf of everyone at Valve and all of the gamers who've gone with us on this adventure over the last few years, thank you very much. Good night. I'm joined now by the winner of the Fellowship Award. It is, of course, Gabe Newell. Gabe, you're more, uh, you're more in touch, perhaps, with gaming audiences than any other game developer. How does it feel to achieve this recognition? Uh, it's, it's a tremendous honor, and I really think it's a, 
a credit to the fact that we are connected to those gamers, that they're the ones who have sort of led us uh, to all of our games and the results today. And who's this, who's this man standing next to you? I, I'm Gabe's new imaginary friend here in the UK, <laughs> but I'm a big fan of Valve, a big fan of Steam, and a big fan of every game that Gabe's been involved in. I'm a huge fan. And like everyone else, I'm looking forward to what must be the most hotly anticipated game on the planet. Half-Life Half 3, Life yes. 3. And yeah. Gabe's now going to tell us exactly when that's coming out. Please, Gabe. I don't know this man at all. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know your own imaginary friend, Jonathan Ross? You could have just said soon. That would have been fine. Can we have, is there any way we can have any news on Half-Life 3? No, yeah, we don't have anything to say. There is it's okay. ready when it's ready. So, I mean, they, they, the games you make at Valve are so unbelievably exciting. Left 4 Dead, uh, Portal 2. Um, where do they come from? Well, I mean, uh, it really is the result of bringing together a bunch of people who are super passionate. I mean, the original impulse behind Half-Life 1 was really to build a game that we wanted to play. And by bringing together like-minded people and soliciting the input uh, from our fans, it's what has helped us build all these games. So Half-Life 1 was 15 years ago now, am I right? Uh, 1998, yeah. Wow, I mean, that's, yeah, I just saw Jonathan drop his eyes there in well, shame and disgust at yeah. how the years have rolled by. I was only four then. <laughs> yes. Yeah, of course, well, likewise. And uh, so, I mean, did you ever think something like this would happen all those years ago when you were making... We really, you know, it isn't, you know, winning awards are not really what motivates most of us at the company. So uh, for us, it's just the opportunity to work together and build the things that we have and to be part of the, the, the gaming community. That's what we wanted to do, and we've been able to do that this whole time. So it does feel like really truly great games often have a democratic uh, element to them. It feels like the democratization of the art form of games has developed more and more in the last few years. How do, how do you integrate that into your game? Well, I think we've seen a bunch of very interesting stuff happening. So if you think of a multiplayer game or a social game really as being a collaboration between a game designer and their community, you know, we continue to see that. When we have stuff like the workshop where we're actually drawing users in and they're making, you know, 300,000 euros a year generating content for each other, it's really an acknowledgement of the reality of that, of those democratic principles at work. So who do, what do you see as the future of gaming? Give me a five-year snapshot. Oh, it's always a mistake to predict the future, but, you know, I do That's think... That's a very wise, wise answer. It's a question you love getting asked, isn't it? What's gonna, what are we, where are we going to be exactly five years' time? Well, I do think that what we're, we're going to see is it will be challenging for award shows like this to, to deal with the fact that more and more of the experience is going to be created by the people who are participating in the, those experiences. And how do you give an award for best game design when it's, you know you know, community of 10 million people who are building the experience. So that'll certainly be one of the challenges that we face in the next five years. One of the things I always loved about your work, and the, well, I was, my eyes were open when I encountered Gary's mod for the first time, mm -hmm. and I didn't understand how this could work, and this kind of, and it, it was like, it was like a whole new level of gaming. It was genuinely a new gaming experience, and that's mm -hmm. one of the things which I always, Valve are very much at the forefront of, and obviously they're, they're still doing that. And, when, you know, the sort of industry continues to eat itself, because one of my favorite games is called, uh, uh, Trouble in Terrorist Town, which is actually built on top of Gary's Mod, which is yeah. built on top of you know, our engine. engine way back yeah, when, yeah. So, yeah, so. so that uh, sort of ongoing pay it forward <laughs> is continuing. Wasn't Dear Esther also based partly on an original mod for Half-Life 2? Is that... Say again? Wasn't uh, Dear Esther, didn't that have uh -huh. something to do with an original mod for Half-Life 2? Is that right? Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, one of the latest games we're working on is Dota 2, grew out of a mod uh, that was created for Warcraft 3 by a guy named Ice Frog. So, you know, the whole industry is built, you know, on each other's efforts. So with this, uh, with this whole, um, I guess, you know, cloud computing is now a thing. Uh, do you think cloud designing will become a thing? You said about 10,000 people designing a game together. How could that work? Well, you know, the, there's this sort of insatiable demand for, for gaming right now. I think in the last year, our business has grown about 15 per, 50 percent, excuse me, wow. on the back of uh, the opportunities that have been created by having these open platforms. And just so people sort of understand the scale of how, how big it's getting, when we do... You know, Steam itself, so like the last Dota 2 update, we were, we were generating three and a half terabits per second. So wow. th that's about 2% of all of the mobile and land-based internet activity yeah. was just for a single game update. That gives you an idea of sort of the scale of, of, of what's what's happening. So if your broadband was slow, it's essentially <laughs> Gabe's fault. It's, you know, yeah, it's your it? fault, too. That's foul like a movie. For that. It's not working, it's because they've just <laughs> some sort of update come out. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I think we are going to continue to see tremendous innovation coming out of that, the, out of that potential, out of the unusual, crazy, weird, disgusting, 
but ultimately wonderful experiences that people will create for each other. I'm going to pop quiz you both very quickly. Top three games that you didn't make that you just love playing. Uh, Super Mario uh, 64, uh, uh, Doom, uh, and uh, actually Plants vs. Zombies is right up there right now. It's a great game, isn't it? <laughs> Jonathan? I didn't make any games, really, so I, but I, games I love playing at the moment. Uh, I'm enjoying the new Tomb Raider, that's a great game. I'm enjoying, I, you know, I'll go back to Portal again and again because I love the song at the end as much as anything. Who doesn't like <laughs> Jonathan Colton? Yeah. And that was a genius masterstroke. And the courage you guys showed, putting a song at the end of a video game, now it seems like a no-brainer. But wow, it was incredible then. And also... Speaking of wow, how about wow? Did you play World of Warcraft? I love a bit of World of Warcraft. I'm stuck at, I'm not great at that kind of skinning and grinding. My wife's a level 18. <laughs> skinning and I'm grinding. I'm like a level 7 dwarf with a pink beard. Why don't we get together? Let's run around together online. <laughs> Do some quests. Okay. Is that a promise? Sure, absolutely. Let's do it. All right, I think in the lady who did the song and uh, did, did all the voices in Portal is now is now a sort of off the back of that become quite a Hollywood starlet. But well, yeah. wasn't she in the new Guillermo del Toro movie? Uh, yeah, she was. She she did the voice that they used in the trailer and the voice uh, that they used in the game. So yeah, it's nice when you see that the people that you're working with uh, can use it as a stepping stone to more success because you know that's what we're all about. But you know, the interesting thing I think is, I think the game industry, which runs in tangent to the film industry now, I don't see it as a kind of a step up that someone moves from gaming to film. Yeah. You know, they're, 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 they're kind of linked, but they're different beasts. And the gaming world, is a, it's a different experience. They're still, it's still now they've driven sometimes, but it's a different and fulfilling in a totally different way. And when I see, I think we'll see more and more people from films trying desperately to get over in the games. Be, <laughs> he, you know, he's, you wouldn't believe the people he refuses to pick up the phone for. <laughs> Clooney? No. Busy. Not no. a chance, Tom mate. Cruise? No, I'm busy. Tell him in the toilet. All the time. Gabe yeah. gets it every day. Well, Gabe, congratulations. Thanks so much for talking to us. Uh, you're a fellow of BAFTA now, so that must feel wonderful. It does. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank, Thank you, you, gentlemen. Thank you.